AED? Okay. And it may just be reading it as time. I, I don't know. Maybe your A, AO is, is, can, is telling it time. I, I have no idea. We're going to have to go in and check I that. I think button. AOE is for apostrophe. I mean, like if I do 730, it comes up as time, too. I mean, any, any number comes up as time. Oh, it does? Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah, then it's checked. <clears throat> but is that, is that really a problem? No, it just needs to be changed. Because it, I mean, there's something in your user settings or something in your dictionary. dictionary that needs to be changed because every number shouldn't be coming up at the time. Okay. And here, this is just a little tutorial that's going to help you that you can go through if you want to and figure it out. So if you want to go in there and do it, um, how do you go into a into a field to change it if you're in hyperkeys? Y'all have been listening. You want to go into this blue field? You know it's a field that you can change. How do you go in there? Y'all are gonna do well on the uh, exam. <laughs> It's E. We don't use What's that thing you said about e. alt? Yeah, we never use yeah. it, so alt E? Or you may need e? more than that. <laughs> Ask us anything else. Yeah. We never How do you use get into that. Hyper keys? Huh? How do you get into hyperkeys? How do you get into hyperkeys? Alt C. <laughs> How do you go into oops? No <laughs> main pass. Ready? I don't know. How do you You're going to get a 50 Are because there's only two questions. <laughs> How do you go into the field and how do you get into hyperkeys? So you, you're going to make a 50. All, that never awesome. comes up. No, it's E. E and e hyperkeys. E, pow, brings it right here, fill in a blank. And we haven't covered it a ton, guys. It but only works if there's a field present. Yeah, so it has to be like a blue field. If not, then if you push E in hyperkeys, it's going to take you to the next field, or it's going to take you to the bottom of the page if there's not a field, okay? So anyway, that's just a little exercise right there that you can go through and whatever. You know, so if it's hund, you know, it's supposed to be $100, and you did the H-U-N-D, it's supposed to be $100, you know, <coughs> it's giving you the answer right there, okay? And that, you don't need anything, because it's already written out as the number. It's telling you the number is there. You don't have to write it out as T-H-R-E-E, -E because it's already the number. It already knows how to do the number. So it's giving you kind of the answers <coughs> there. Now it's giving you the exercise of how to do it. You know, so you go through and, and mess around with it. But see, on ours, we never have that little box that needs to come up and for it to be filled out. There's not on there right now? Well, no, now, but like when we're on our machines and when I'm transcribing on Eclipse, that never comes up. <laughs> I know, because you have to put it in there. Okay, so, yeah. okay. so I mean, you know, when you're, this is more like, like when you get out and you're a reporter, you're going to have certain fields, and, and when you take the next class, because we're going to do it, you're going to put fields in there, and when you put in your title pages and stuff like that, it's going to have a field there. It already comes out, you know, with the title pages that I'm going to give you, which are mine, and then you're going to have to go in and fill them out. So you're going to have to know how to do it. You don't necessarily have to know how to do it right now. But, I mean, we've already talked about filling in a blank field or putting a field in there. But we'll go into that more in depth in the next class because you don't really need it right now. You don't need it in school, but you're going to need it when you get out. Okay? Okay. Now they're going to tell you about money overviews or whatever. So it's, you know, converted to money, time, numerals, or words. You know, With Eclipse, two basic steps will give you excellent number translation. Fine. Number translation. Fine-tune your dictionary and fine-tune your number settings. Pure number bar strokes aren't even necessary in your dictionary. Other numbers building blocks will be defined as words, not digit. Guys, all they're doing is going over the stuff that we already went over. I'm sorry. And that's really what they're doing. That's why it was kind of, it's an overview of what we've already done. 
Um, I don't know that it covers anything different. Let me go in there. I don't remember that it does. With Eclipse, too, basically because of an old dictionary entry. Remove such entries and your building block thousand million. Describe orders of magnitude. Write the word dollars when you hear it, not before, and it, like other money words, will trigger number conversion with the appropriate currency symbol. If a number doesn't translate right, it's probably because of an old yeah. dictionary entry. Yeah, it's, it's just going over the same stuff. So really what it's telling you right here is kind of the stuff that we went over. You know, if you want to do the number conversions table, highlight the numbers that you want converted, then do the uh, control shift three, and then it'll give you the different things that you want to change it to. So if you want to change it to money, uh, any of that stuff, um, you know, and this is kind of the same way. You know, if, if you're in there and say you have, uh, is anybody on a job? or can can get in a job you know where you have it uh get in a get in that job right now and let's see if it'll let's see if it'll do it <clears throat> where you have a number Okay, you guys go in that if, if you're in a job, do you have a number there? Yeah, I'm looking for the number. Oh, it's going too fast. Did you say his age was 22? Yeah, his age was 22. Just go to the bottom, it doesn't matter. Just well, go all the way to the bottom. Here, here. So we do what again? Shift M? Well, do I mean, you don't have it in there as a number. I need an actual number. Oh, okay. So go to the bottom of the page. Put your cursor at the end, and then just do like nine. nine. Okay. Oh, so you no, you're in the Okay. Okay. So this to me, and I think right there, Type text. Okay. Five. Type text. It should be. Five. Okay. Okay. So you have five. Now come over here, and say you want to change to five dollars. You okay. shift them. Shift them. Oh, you need to be on hyper keys, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. See? And you shift down. Shift and it changes okay. it to dollars. Okay. So if you have a number right there and you want to change it, these are the things to do. So if you want to, if you want to change to ordinal, and you can try it. Try it with that number right there. Put it on the same number and do shift O. And it should change it to an ordinal. Shift T will change it to time. Shift D will change it to date. So you said shift no to change it to ordinal? Yeah. Okay. Did it? Shift no. What did it do? It's typing the number. It's just not typing the number. Oh, you know, I just got all. Yeah, it's like shut it out. Try to shift G. You did shift G or all G? Alright. See. Shift G. Is yours where it has the Hmm? No. And it's supposed to convert it. Do another number. Do what's holding it. Do you have any numbers? 
And just do um, yeah. Let's do shift. Oh. I know, but I. If you did for the dollar signs. It should do it, but I don't know why it's not. Mine is not doing it now. But it does it with the money? Yeah. Yeah. But David, I don't know how to get that. Because <laughs> I changed what? it to Roman numerals, and I don't know how to get that little window back up again. What window? <laughs> Well, let me, let me Control see shift pound. Control shift three. Okay, I got it. Okay. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Well, when it's working correctly, I don't know. You can change it to any of these things and you should be able to do, you know, your shift, you know, whatever. You know, shift. Because the shift makes it to capital. Okay, so you remember M is mark. Just small m is mark. So if you want to mark something, but with the shift it makes it the capital M, then it does a totally different thing. It changes it to money. Okay? Yeah, you do have to be in hyperkeys in order to do it. Okay? But, like I was looking at Sarah's, if, if you're on the number and it's not converting it, are you on the number? Just put it on the five. And then I did the shift. Don't mess with anything. <laughs> I did right earlier. There. No. Right there, number six. number six. So now it brings up that box, mm -hmm. so it'll do whatever you want it to do. Now you want to change it to an ordinal? Ordinal. So instead of doing, and it's giving you the speed key right there, which is control, control shift three, or you just press number six, and then we'll change it. Okay? Now it wants to work. Okay. Now it's working? Probably it's not going to work. Let's see some of the choices that Automagic offers relating to numbers. As soon as I place your numbers, as soon as I place my cursor on 3, Automagic offers me several number conversion choices, <coughs> turning this to a digit, to a money number. So you see what it does there on the, on the, um, on the Automagic 2? It's automatically going to tell you, ask you what you want to do with that. So even if you just write out three, it's just three car garage, you know, it is going to ask you, well, did you mean dollars? Did you mean time? 
Roman numeral, or if you want to change it to something totally different, um, you know, an ordinal, whatever, then it allows you to do that through number five, which is what we did with you guys, okay? So if, if it doesn't give you that option here, then you can press this number here, and then you can go in and change it, okay? But a lot of times it's gonna give you the best three or four examples that it knows, which is usually number, money, time, okay? So that's usually the three examples it's gonna give you. Every now and then it'll give you the Roman numeral or whatever, but. Um, so it's always thinking ahead. To time, to a Roman numeral, and in case these are not enough, choice five opens the number conversion dialog so I have all of my number conversion choices at my fingertips. In this case, no change is necessary. However, when I place my cursor on the word car, the number one choice is to turn this into the expression three car with a hyphen. In this case, two... Did you see that? Which is the proper way that it should be. It's a three car garage. It's describing the garage with two words. It's a three car, so it needs to be hyphenated. Okay, three car garage. Make sense? 30 really meant time. I can place my cursor either on 2 or 30. Either way, Automagic will detect the full number and give me the appropriate number conversion choices. You see what it's telling you right there? So say you do it like Miss Murphy and you have, you hear, well, uh, it was at 2 and you hear 2, T-W-O, and then it's like 30 and it's like, oh, 30, 3 -0. Then all you have to do is put it on two, and it'll give you the option of what did you mean 230, 230 dollars, 230 as a date, you know, so that's what the little slash is for, or 230 time, or Roman numeral 230. Okay, so it's always kind of thinking ahead. You don't have to really do a whole lot. It's always thinking ahead of what it, you know, what you need to do. So. And if it's not one of these, you go to number six, number conversion, change it to whatever you need to. In this example, pressing four would turn this to a time number. And there was no need to mark the full extent of the number before Automagic offered its choices. In this next example, third refers to a date. And so the number one choice is to convert this to a digit with the ordinal suffix. And this yes that follows is the start of a paragraph. If I press three, that will now make it easy for me to say this is an answer. Most of the time, Eclipse automatic number converter. You see what it was doing right there? So th this person was writing so fast, they forgot to put the answer symbol or whatever. No big deal. You put it right there on yes. You can go through that whole little mess of whatever, or just push, what's the answer? F4. F4. What's F3? Question. Question. Okay. F3, question. F4, answer. So that's all you need to do. Automatically puts it in the format. You're ready to go. Version formats numbers properly as you write, but sometimes context may be unclear. For those times where you need to change the format of a number, Automagic makes it possible to do so with a very minimum of steps. Any questions? Pretty easy. All right? Automagic's going to do a lot of this stuff for you. All right? It's going to do a lot of your guessing for you. So, any questions about any of that stuff? going to display. Hotkeys, pop-ups, and fonts are a few automagic display options that are found in the View Toggles dialog. View Toggles dialog. Let's see. At the right edge of the info bar, automagic can show the speed keys or hyper keys that are available as keyboard shortcuts. This can help new users to learn the keyboard shortcuts for editing efficiency, but more experienced users may want to hide them. This can be done by going to the View Toggles dialog and unchecking the box that appears next to Hotkeys. 
Your automatic choices can also be displayed in a small pop-up window that can appear after a short delay. The delay is expressed in milliseconds, and the default setting is half a second. So as I move my cursor, the choices offered by Automagic are brought closer to where I'm looking. In fact, you can hide the info bar entirely and still see your Automagic choices only in a pop-up. To do this, go to the View Toggles dialog. And that's how, you know, you were talking about getting rid of your info bar. Do you use your info bar a lot? That little box? Yeah. No, one day my software crashed and when it reset, it just was there. Well, that's how you take it off. So if you don't want it on there. What What is it though? It's just the info bar? Yeah. Okay. And that's not going to take away the side problem? No. Does as long as you have auto magic and, you know, then you should be okay. okay. So if you want to mess with it, you know, you can see what it does. This way, if you mess with it now, and it doesn't, then we know how to fix it. After a short delay, the delay is expressed in milliseconds, and the default setting is half a second. So as I move my cursor, the choices offered by Automagic are brought closer to where I'm looking. I have this, and it makes it really easy. But, I mean, you may not like it because, you know, the, you know there's just words right there. So as I'm scrolling over, this little box keeps popping up, and it may confuse you. It kind of helps me through editing, and I can edit really fast because of it, just because of, you know the options are right there. So if I may stroke something, I just pick number one. I don't have to change, you know move my eyes over. You know I'm kind of exaggerating, but move them over to the auto magic. Oh, it's number four. Press number four. Blah blah blah. I can keep everything right there, and I'm just right there in the middle. Okay. So if that's how you want to do it, huh? You're not exaggerating. It gives me a headache. Go back and forth. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you don't like doing that, then, you know, that's how you fix it. But it, it's kind of, it gets a little confusing in the beginning when you first start doing it. So I'm going to play that Milliseconds, again. and the default setting is half a second. So as I move my cursor, the choices offered by Automagic are brought closer to where I'm looking. In fact, you can hide the info bar entirely and still see your Automagic choices only in a pop-up. To do this, go to the View Toggles dialog and uncheck the box next to Info Bar, but leave the choices next to Auto Magic and Pop Up checked. That frees up some space on the screen without depriving you of your Auto Magic choices. Don't forget that you can adjust the font that's used to display your Auto Magic choices. For instance, you could use a smaller font that's narrow and bold. The Automagic choices would still be very readable, but now the info bar would not need to be as wide. So you could use the mouse to hover over the right edge of the info bar, then hold down the left mouse button while you drag to the left. That could free up some display space for other elements on your screen. You see what they were saying right there? So if you want to move your screen smaller, bigger, whatever, just kind of put it on there. Hold down, hold down the... Uh, click and then just kind of move it over with your finger. Y'all know how to do that? Yeah, I mean it, that's kind of elementary computer stuff, but I mean some of you may not know it, but maybe it's not elementary. <laughs> if you have a face and a pulse you probably should know that, but whatever. <laughs> See, mine's kind of doing it on this little uh, on this little exercise right here. See, now did shift.
I think what we were doing on that thing, if you want to change it, what you have to do is highlight it. So you do F7. F7 highlights it. You can't mark it. You can't really use the M. I think you have to use the F7 to mark it. And then do whatever you want. Was that shift? Oh, it was the one that wasn't working? Yeah. So now it's going to do, um, and try it. Try it and see if it works. Because if not, then what you need to do is mark it, which is F7, and then do the Control Shift 3. So do five numbers. Control shift three. No. The other speed keys didn't work for me either. What's that? That speed keys like the <clears throat> control O and what was the other one? The one shouldn't be control, it should be shift. It should yeah, work if I do seven twenty eight thirty nine where it's something that could actually be Yeah, converted into yeah. yeah. Okay, and I think what you have to do is you have to mark it first. So you mark all of this. So you see what I did right there? You guys? If you mark it with M, it doesn't work, but you have to mark it with M. Okay, you see what, you see what it's doing right here? $143.06, okay? So I want to change that into money. So I do F7, 7, 7, 7, 7, F7, and then I do Shift M, changes it to the money. Okay? So you have to mark it first. If not, then it's just going to do the first one. Because it had like one hun or something. See, it had one. So it, it's thinking that you just want to change that first one. Guys, y'all listening? Hey, because I don't want you to come back and tell me you don't understand. Okay? Right here, when you're marking something, into, into money and you want to convert it, you have to mark the whole thing because if you just do the shift M right there, what it's going to do 